Assalamu uh, alaikum. Now the other um, uh, part of the um, introduction of the genetic course, we will discuss uh, the concept of uh, genetic variation. Uh, this lecture, uh, I will include two additional uh, material lectures. Uh, they're already posted on my channel. المحاضرة القادمة لما نحكي عن cytogenetics كمان راح يكون في additional lectures هذول كلهم ما كانوا موجودين بال بالسنوات السابقة. But this is all a new addition to your course. But uh, it's still within the same material. It's just uh, covered in 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 different uh, views. So genetic variation is uh, as it, as it, as it is being uh, described. يعني يعني from from the uh, obvious uh, um, here from the obvious uh, introduction is that uh, genes that code for the same traits can give variable phenotypes. For who will concept hona the genetic variation. Is the variability of the يعني هون عندنا كلمتين بدنا نرح نحفظهم أو رح نعرفهم اللي هو الجينوتايب and the phenotype. So a genotype is the uh, nucleotide sequence of the gene, Ex the exact sequence of the nucleotides. That's the genotype. If there's a difference in the in the sequence, راح يختلف الجين بين واحد وثاني. هو تحكي الجين الفلاني هذا جينوتايب مختلف عن جينوتايب الثاني. هلا اذا هذا الجين الجينوتايب تبعه ما اختلف بس ما اعطاني فينوتايب مختلف شو يعني فينوتايب فينوتايب از ذا تريت ذات يو سي ريفلكتد باي ذا جينوتايب مثلا واحد الجينوتايب تبعه كان مثلا تو جيف ا ديفرنت كايند مثلا اوف ديفرنت نمبر اوف ميلانين سيلز اور ا ديفرنت برودكشن اوف ميلانين in their cells. فراح يطلع عندهم skin color مختلف عن الثاني. So the genes is the gene is different and then the trait of the gene which is the skin color or the eye color or مثلا هون ال color تبع ال 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 vegetables or the butterflies or whatever. These are the visible and or the traits that you can see or assess. مش ضروري يكون شوف شوفهم بعينك. ممكن you can assess them in a lab. But as long as that you can get uh, a definable characteristic out of that genotype that is called a phenotype. So that is genetic variation. As genes are variable between people, between animals, between different plants, but between whatever walks of life, as they change, as the genotype changes, the phenotype changes. So that brings us to the human genetic identity. Between you and the person sitting next to you, we are about 99.9% .9 identical. We have about uh, 3.2 uh, billion nucleotides that are identical and only about 3.2 million nucleotides that are different. But only 0.1% are different. So all the differences that we, see, that we see among each other are only present in about 0.1% of our genome. So, uh, the genetic variation that is seen between genomes can be between uh, single base differences in genomes, between any two differences, between about two to five uh, million, and amino acid differences in proteosomes between two different individuals, about a hundred thousand. So, شو يعني هذا البحكي اللي بحكي لك إياه؟ إنه the difference in genetic variation اللي هو راح يكون بالملايين تقريبا حكينا. شباب يعني الرقم يقارب الثلاثة مليون. بيعطيك هادو 3 مليون مش كلهم بيعطوك different بال 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 uh, amino acid translation only about a hundred thousand of these can give you a difference in uh, translation شو هاد اللي بكونوا these are mutations that are uh, as we mentioned before these are silent silent mutations so uh, you can refer back to our uh, uh, genetic discussion in microbiology, but we will go through them quickly here as well. So, uh, genetic variation 
These are heritable variation within and between populations of organisms encoded in the sequence of these four base pairs that make up the DNA. Uh, which uh, describes the molecular uh, biology behind all these things and will uh, be a resource as well. So genetic diversity. Genetic diversity is the foundation of all higher levels of biodiversity. So this is the diversity between uh, the organisms, between the populations themselves. So the diversity provides how the whole recipe of the populations and the species, which in turn uh, can formulate uh, communities and maybe ecosystems as well. So this enables evolutionary change and artificial selection. So شو يعني؟ مثلاً خلينا نحكي مثلاً if يعني هذا السؤال دائما بطرحه للجميع. خلينا نجيب مثلاً let's say the model human. يعني خلينا نحكي مثلاً the one who has that we have we select. This is our strongest مثلاً person. And let's copy everybody in humanity. If we have some sort of technology that we can mimic someone's genome, we can see copy one from this human being. And let's say this this person, let's say whoever that you might think of, who is, for example, has high muscle mass, high flexibility, high whatever. وبناخذ هالبني ادم ونحكي كنا بدنا نصير زيه، would that be good or bad؟ مثلا اذا انت كنا كنا يعني او مثلا سؤال نطرحه بطريقه ثانيه مثلا لو كل اولادك كانوا نسخه متطابقه عن عن بعض. would that be good or bad؟ so why do we have genetic variation؟ why should we be why should we be variable؟ why shouldn't we just strive زي السبارتنز مثلا strive for genetic superiority ونقتل كل الباقية بحيث انه only the superior are uh, only the superior remain and that will over time become uh, the population كل population بتكون زي البكتيريا يعني انه مثلا uh, everyone who can't survive a certain thing dies and then بس القوي يبقى هلا uh, genetic variation already has this evolutionary pressure already does it and it is actually actually a mechanism uh, as to uh, provide longevity or longevity for uh, all the populations كيف هلا مثلا كلياتنا كلنا نسخة طبق الأصل عن شخص هل هذا الشخص كامل لو إحنا بي إحنا مثلاً حكينا مثلاً إنه هذا إحنا شخص إحنا اخترناه على أساس هو he is the best of us مثلاً على أي أساس he is the best of us is he هل في واحد عنا مثلاً he is has the highest IQ and highest muscle mass and highest flex شو اسمه reflexes and the highest مثلاً flexibility and the highest bone density and the highest مثلاً ability to liver مثلاً إنه to process different materials and has مثلا no mutations in his genes and 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 كل في بني آدم زي هيك if there is I don't think يعني I don't think that that person is 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 يعني موجود طلعوا على كل بني آدم نظر إلو على أساس إنه كان ممتاز يعني في مثلا بعض الأمثلة إنه مثلا كان ممثل والله بنسى اسمه دائما بس كان يمثل بالزمانات أول version of the of the movies of Superman هذا بني آدم كل صار طلع عليه يحكي هذا he is مثلا he is Superman he is such a genetically superior human وقع الحصان and he was شو اسمه يعني paralyzed from the neck down for all his life من عمره ثلاثين سنة لما مات بالستينات عمره whatever يعني he was paralyzed so even if someone يعني arbitrarily إحنا هو he was not definitely يعني he turned out he had also other medical conditions in his fifties and sixties. Even if someone that person is not protected from trauma, from weather, from whatever, right? 
So this genetic diversity uh, is actually a defense mechanism. This is is that everyone, every person will have uh, a formula of diversity that will put them and enable them to survive in a certain condition. bacteria in a certain condition that others cannot survive. Yes, we are in a little bit. Yes, we are just like bacteria, but. We do not look, يعني بس إحنا مش التركيبتنا الاختلاف بيننا وبين البكتيريا إنه تركيبتنا إنه إحنا we're, we're eukaryotes, we are uh, complex organisms. We are not made as to all of us die to one cell, one one single very fat cell for that specific, uh, مثلا uh, recipe of stress. بحيث إنه ترجع and then becomes all of the cells are immune to that stress, مثلا antibiotic. We are not like this. We are actually, يعني, in a little bit, فيها فيها تشابه. التشابه هنا إنه إحنا people who have the ability to overcome a certain stress will survive هاي المنطقة, and then they will procreate. رح يو يولدوا. الناس اللي ما بيقدروا يعيشوا بالمنطقة المعينة مثلاً, they will try to remove themselves from that stress, from that stressor. هلا إذا ما قدروا مثلاً كان مثلاً برد. مثلا كان فامن كان مثلا مرض معين ملاريا تي بي وات ايفر they did not survive it that is actually this is this is the possible defense mechanism that actually is the survival of the fittest هون بصير تشابه مع البكتيريا بحيث if someone if if we have هلا هذا بني ادم هو we deem as uh, مثلا superior he might get to be his uh, cell immune system, cell, cell, cellular immunity might not be uh, superior and then he might die. لو كلياتنا كنا زيره, إذا إجا تي بي كلياتنا بنموت. Do you see the point here? So if all your children were, were the same, فبصير عندك all your children, yeah, all of them will overcome uh, a certain stressor, all, all of them would die from that certain stressor. وهي هاي هنا we have genetic diversities that some of us will survive better than others certain stressors so some of us will not be so well uh, suited to these stressors and so on we have a communal uh, effect as well for the people who the ability to survive a certain stressor can shield the ones that uh, don't have the ability to to, to uh, survive that stressor. Behind you know, those people who are shielded will provide shield for their, for those others in another, in another diversity, in something else. So we have, a, يعني, this is a second tier of complexity that organisms that have, مثلا, uh, uh, complex structures, مش بس زي البكتيريا. ف, uh, يعني حتى يعني هذه نقطة يعني بطول عنها الحديث بحيث إنه حتى even um, uh, bacteria can help each other if they are the same strains but everything يعني على at, at, at the complexity levels of humanity would be a much higher uh, formula than seen in prokaryotes so the variation selection and time this is the theory of evolution how the descendant of this primitive cell differentiated to millions of species share our planet today this is um, I share the view that we are not descendants of a single cell uh, there is uh, as we mentioned as I mentioned you know there are uh, many uh, laureates and, and high scholars who do not share this view uh, is there evolution within the same species definitely can a species uh, change uh, to become مثلاً, very different than their earlier ancestors? This is quite possibly true. But you know, a certain species will completely become a different species. مثلاً, uh, a bird will turn into a monkey or a monkey turns into uh, um, I don't know, a lion or a lion um, you know, or مثلاً, uh, bacteria over a hundred trillion years will never become a human being. Um, now, is there uh, is there interchange between the, between? Yes, we do share. It's a spectrum of complexity. So, um, if all of us share 
this this ancestor which is a single cell so sh all of us should should at least if 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 humanity is the superior all of us should be humans why are there monkeys and lions and and plants um uh, have one. So uh, all of us would, if if humans are the most complex or whatever, then why don't why don't all the cells turn into humans? And if if it is a chain, nothing I know, a cell then another cell then more complex cell and so on so on a chain and then it breaks the chain and diverges. Same with another theory. So um, we should be able to see. I mean, if, if, uh, um, not theoretically, practically, one of these chains turning into the next one. And yeah, we should be able to see uh, an organism that is a single cell turn into a multiple, multiple cell organism over time. يعني مثلاً نحط مثلاً سنة هاي نرجع لهم بعد عشر سنين نحطهم على بديش إنه يرجعوا مثلاً صاروا different organism that is now multiple cell cellular organism وصاروا يحكوا مع بعض. So this doesn't uh, happen, and if it happens, it happens in a very يعني, uh, small uh, within a, within a limit it's always within a limit because it's within a limit that's what what confuses some people and that that is the fuel for the controversy you know because the limit there is a limit between a minimum and, and a maximum of the each species but usually if you if we are able over time to uh, really um, outline the spectrum of, of, of all organisms and then the limit of each uh, evolutionary uh, capability of each species we will be able to maybe put the uh, theory of evolution to a more uh, correct perspective now all these changes are due to three simple ingredients which are, which are the variation and then there, there's selection and then there's time so variation, this is what we mentioned, that, that is that each offspring will resemble the parents, but each individual is unique. And this is what we mentioned, if all your children are exact copies of you, and then their children are also exact copies of them, and, and ultimately of you, then if, the, if, there's a, if, there's a, if there is a certain stressor, all of this very, all of these people are either die or live. Mafi, uh, um, there's no uh, small um, differences that may ultimately help others to survive. So everyone resembles their parents, but they have their own uniqueness. Mutation and recombination, uh, recombinations, recombinations introduce variations in each generation. Each generation has its own mutations and recombinations. That is dictated. That is dictated by. Um, Two factors. The factor the first is that this is a basic or default recombination that happens at each generation, and this is what you know from uh, meiosis. There is another uh, um, variation that can be introduced due to uh, environmental factors, and that can dictate where variation will shift over time. Now these two processes are constantly generating random diversity in the forms of life. Why is genetic variation important to species? If there is genetic variation, then some individuals in a species will be more fit than others. This ensures that some individuals of the species will survive and keep the species going. And then we mentioned how uh, whoever in individuals will, if uh, in our species can survive, may shield others and others who might over time after a few generations. That species, that uh, that shielded subpopulation, may be become fit in another um, in, in another method stressor. Uh, now, if there is no genetic genetic variation, as, as we mentioned, then all divisions will be exactly the same. This could be deadly if there's a change in the environment. The species could go extinct because none will be fit for a specific environment. If Zaid's son is that exactly like Zaid, then he can't manage the new environment that he is in. So if you can if you can think about this, uh, is our time the same as the as our parents' time? I don't want to talk about uh, genes and stuff. Is uh, well if you have the same skills, genes. We're not talking about genes. If you have the same skills, exact same skills and upbringing as your, uh, if if by some 
point you, you were able to freeze yourself for 200 years or 100 years and then your upbringing, you were مثلا 20 uh, you brought in your upbringing and then you were detached from your community for about 100 years and then you are you were thawed and then you, you started back into the, 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 مثلا, a generation or two ahead you will find yourself that you're not equipped with the same skills that the same that the, the, the whoever uh, current generation is now uh, they have come up with so مثلا, my child the, our, our current ch children are now very uh, adept with technology uh, with uh, computers with all these things because this is their environment and this is where the world is heading and so these are the skills that they pick up as they are growing if you are to bring someone from 100 years ago who never grew up with these things and you put them there, they will definitely struggle. If this is only by, by time variation, then imagine by if there is a genetic variation as well. So do gene uh, variation predict stressors through rising threats that parents face? So that is a question for, uh, for others or yourself if you want to uh, research it, but I will uh, give you the quick answer is that uh, definitely the environment can predict these stresses can predict genetic variation. It is a very long um, uh, discussion though, but yeah, yeah. So, uh, example which population of hares, yani rabbits, has a better chance of survival as a species? So, population A or B, and obviously. From what we discussed, population B would probably have a better chance of survival. Now, because it has more genetic variation than population A, so there will be more, there will be some individuals that are more fit if the environment were to change. Thus, the species has a higher chance of survival. So, uh, genetic variation definitions. Let's go through these uh, definitions. So, we have alleles, a locus. Uh, homozygote, heterozygote, genotype, phenotype. Uh, pleomorphic and polymorphism. So, uh, character, which is a structure, a function, or an, an attribute that is determined by a gene or a group of genes. So, the appearance of the seed method that was mentioned in the Mendel's experiment. So, that's a character. So, a trait is the alternate form of the character. So, if one character is smooth, the, the trait is the, the alternate form, which is wrinkled method. A phenotype is the physical description, like we mentioned in earlier, and then the genotype is the genetic constitution. Mutation is the change in the material, of the genetic code. It's usually rare and pathological. Now, the other form of mutation that is not rare and is not pathological is called polymorphism. So this is a change in the genetic material. It is not rare, it is not pathological, it is very common. It is non-pathological and it is actually helpful and it is uh, actually actually it is actually a uh, the, the driver force or the driving mechanism of genetic variation or the most dominant form of genetic variation mechanism. So monomorphic means one form, dimorphism two forms of the trait. Polymorphism means many many forms of a certain trait. So more on this uh, morphism, so height, for example, is measurable on a scale uh, of numbers. It is not either or. And if you, there's no tall or, or short, you are, for 180, 185, 176, 100, whatever. So it's a, it's a scale. So having the ability to roll tall, for or attached earlobe, this is an either or. So this is a dimorphic. Different eye colors is polymorphic. So mutations are rare, whereas polymorphism is common. Each variation in polymorphism is deemed normal and functioning. So a polymorphism can't be abnormal, can't be non-functioning, can't be a disease. It is just another version of the, of the normal. That's basically what polymorphism is. In enzymes, for example, this can change substrate uh, specificity, methylene. So specific... Uh, traits, uh, processes, less chemicals, for example, more chemicals, maybe better, maybe less, but it's still able to su to uh, process these chemicals and it's still able to do its job, maybe in a different fashion, maybe an added substrate, maybe less substrate, but it is still a non-disease forming. So, a locus is the location of the gene on the chromosome. So, um, locus, methylene, allele, A1, A2, 
and then uh, locus two is مثلا alleles B one, B two. But we will have we will we will discuss this later on in the next lecture. We will give it more uh, flesh here. A homozygote is an organism that has two identical alleles. For example, a a female is a homozygous for the X chromosome. It ha she has two identical alleles. Heterozygous is an organism with two different alleles. So males are uh, having only one copy is hemizygous, not homozygous. Hemizygous, males are hemizygous because they have only one copy of each sex chromosome. Uh, heterozygous means that you have two different alleles. Homozygous if you have two identical alleles. So you have two different uh, versions of chromosome 21, for example. So you, you are heterozygous, that allele. So a dominant trait and a recessive trait. So a dominant trait is a trait that is that shows in a heterozygote, and recessive trait is a trait that is hidden in a heterozygote. So you you have to be homozygous of a, a recessive trait to be to shown that to show that trait. If you are heterozygous in a dominant trait, heterocut homozygous, you will still show that a trait. So an organism's uh, physical appearance based on the interaction of uh, the genes and environment. So for example, fur coat, eye color, uh, number of toes, hair texture, uh, speed, intelligence. So uh, the genes, uh, DNA and organisms has with an, um, uh, two uh, capital Bs or capital B with a small b or a small b with a small b. So this will give you different forms. So if you have the two recessive traits, if you are heterozygous with the two recessive traits, you will have blue eyes. If you happen to have one of the dominant traits, so if you are heterozygous with the dominant trait or homozygous with the two dominant traits, you will end up with with brown eyes. الناس who have brown eyes, even brown eyes is in a spectrum. So someone who has uh, a parent with uh, with the recessive trait might not have as deeply colored brown eyes as uh, someone with uh, a more uh, dominant trait of, of someone who has um, both parents and grandparents. But it's it's not it's not يعني, that clear cut. But at least we can see in no this is brown dominant or recessive. It is non brown or blue. So uh, genetic variation. The ultimate source of genetic variation is differences in DNA sequences. So most of these genes uh, of differences do not affect how individuals function. This is important as we mentioned. So some genetic variations are associated with disease. Others improve the ability of the species or survive changes in the environment. So genetic variation is the basis for evolution by natural uh, selection. So the ultimate source of genetic variation is the differences in uh, DNA sequences. Most of these variations or differences do not affect how individuals function. So if you go back to um, our lectures on mutations, you can see that the majority of mutations, when we were mentioning uh, the different uh, protection mechanisms that we have, we have on DNA and its replication, so the majority of these defense mechanisms will prevent mutation, and if mutations were to occur, they will be less disastrous, and only the only the very very few will penetrate all these defense mechanisms and cause be a, a true mutation that causes uh, pathology or uh, yeah, any disease. So uh, so the majority of mechanisms prevent these polymorphisms. Then you have a small ability of polymorphisms that actually occur, and this is actually helpful and it is planned for. And then you have a tiny, tiny bit of those variations that break through into full-blown mutations and are pathological. So variation types, the quantitative characters are those that vary along a continuum, مثلا, within a population. So uh, here, مثلا, a tall and short person or skin color method uh, because it's, it's 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 a spectrum between very very dark and very very uh, pale method so quantitative uh, variation is usually due to polygenic inheritance which is the additive effect of two or more genes influence in a single phenotypic character so this is what we were talking about 
when you mention like different, uh, uh, skin colors, eye colors, uh, uh, height. So these are the continuous traits. These are usually uh, polygenic uh, traits. So uh, height and skin color is determined by additive effects of several incompletely dominant genes. Now discrete characters, so methylene, uh, flower color, are usually determined by a single locus with uh, different alleles with distinct impact on the phenotype. So if you have two of the white genes, it is a white rose. Two of the red genes, it is a red rose. If it has a combination of both these alleles, it will be methylene, uh, uh, a pink or whatever rose. Okay. So measurement of uh, variation, so assortment of uh, chromosomes. So uh, we mentioned of, of these two uh, mechanisms of variation and the first one we talked about was in, in the previous lecture in meiosis and we will cover that again and I will send you the, uh, the additional uh, material. So uh, meiosis contributes to genetic variation. Uh, how methylene the chromosomes in each uh, homologous pair as they pair up, uh, line up and separate at metaphase one is a matter of chance, like the filter code. So the assortment of chromosome at that time end up in a resulting cell that occurs randomly. So you have four combinations that are possible. So uh, possibility one is that uh, a complete set of these two chromosomes are broken into these two cells, or um, the other possibility at metaphase 1 is that um, the blue set here is taken up into as they are lined up together is actually lines up and it ends up here so when you break up the cells you end up with different combinations so these are the two the four different combinations this is at the entire level of the chromosome now if the haploid number of an organism is known the number of possible uh, number of combinations of the gamete can be Calculate. So this is the 2 uh, to the power n, where n is the haploid number. So our haploid number is 23, so ours is 2 to the power 23, or about 8 million possible chromosome combinations, only on this fact. Now if you add crossing over to it, crossing over is the exchange of genetic material between homologous chromosomes. This exchange occurs during prophase 1 of meiosis, not metaphase 1. So pro phase one is uh, 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 for uh, it's pro for crossing over. So crossing over begins. Homologous chromosomes are closely paired. There is a precise gene by gene alignment at that point, and segments of the two chromatids can then then be exchanged at one or more sites. What does this matter? Because these two are from the from the dad. Actually, one of them are from the dad's dad. And one are from the from the dad's mom, right? And same can happen for the 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 mother. So you have different combinations from different genes from if each parent, and then each parent is influenced by their by their parents combination that they had. So that adds a, th a third tier. So you have the first tier is this uh, assortment. The second is the crossing over of one, and then third is. Uh, these two combine with, with each individual and their own parents. So this is where uh, crossing over can occur. And then you have different segments that may be uh, between different chromosomes. So if you are to end up, you will never end up, you will never end up with your grandfather's complete chromosome. Never. You will always have some points of your grandmother's crossover. And then... Your, your, your father will be a combination of these two and his both alleles are a mixture of his father and his mother so when and then his own chromosomes your father's own chromosomes or your own mother's own chromosomes will also cross over so there will be another mixture and then you will have the different combinations in, in here and then you will end up with these four combinations are actually many many more combinations uh, so the causes of genetic variations um, between evolution, uh, natural selection, gene flow and drift, gene frequency, adaptation, and mutation, we will cover these now. 
So, evolutionary changes. Evolution refers to change over time or transformation over time. So evolution assumes that all natural forms arose from their ancestors and adapted over time to their environments, leading to variation. So genetic evolution is a two-stage process, a production and distribution of heritable variation between adaptation and natural selection. So evolution, I get a bit between the difference between micro and macro evolution. So new varieties of organisms, and this is where the most of the um, um, the, the controversy is, and how far ma macro evolution can go if it can go very far. So examples of evolution you have to be better than the competitors to survive. Evolution can greatly modify the existing structure, but has to work within its limits. So the human larynx sit lower in the throat than in other mammals. Ice fish uh, lost their RBCs and survive in freezing environment. Tapeworm parasite no digestive system using skin to absorb nutrients. Uh, Methylene, one of the examples is these uh, peppered moth uh, moths called uh, Bistin betularia. So uh, they occur in two color uh, phases between this mutated homozygous and the wild type uh, variant, which is peppered, has these colors. Now, um, now in the typical wild type, they have this speckled phenotype. It's caused by the recessive allele. In in 1848, 5% of the population were dark, like this, and 95% were peppered. Now, in 1895, I think this was done in the UK somewhere. So in 1895, 98% were dark colored, while 2% were light colored. So the genetic variation used this uh, dark colored, that was only 5%, and this became the dominant strain in about 98% in 1895. Now in 1995, 20% 20, 20 or less were back to dark color, and 81% were back to the light color or the peppered. This this was due to to uh, pollution. So uh, when when this in this phase, there was a lot of pollution, and then uh, so um, they, when these two color phases are displayed against an unpolluted, lichen covered tree, lichen who no fungus that uh, lives on trees for this licking cover trees both faces are displayed against a dark tree so uh, in during um, pollution the licking dies so the uh, the tree will become brown look brown but no for the peppered ones will be more visible to so it becomes an easier prey so most of these will die the brown ones will be hidden on the on the non lichen tree. وبالعكس لما راح على مقل pollution now the trees are, have lichen back again so these became easy prey they started dying and then these that survived now become the dominant strain. So زي اللي حكينا زي إسرار البكتيريا as well. What are the agents of evolutionary change? Natural selection. Environmental conditions determine which individuals in a population gene pool produce the most offspring. So we have three conditions are required uh, for natural selection to occur. Uh, variation must exist among individuals in a population. So you have to have this genetic variation within the same population. A variation among individuals must result in differences in the number of offspring survival. So uh, do these variations have enough differences to cause enough um, uh, phenotype that will enable survival. So is the phenotype strong enough to cause survival? So the variation among individuals must result in differences in the number of offspring survival. So these genetic variations must have a threshold number of phenotypic changes that significantly affect the survival. Uh, variation must be genetically inherited. These variations must be hard-coded. It's, it's now genotype. You cannot go back once you change the base, uh, base pair, خلص, this is hard-coded. You can't go back to the earlier uh, form. So constant genes versus the variable, which is here, is the environment. So natural selection is the control which variations occur and which variations get eliminated. So 
survival of the fittest or for the fittest, uh, many species produced, uh, produce more offspring or eggs. Uh, many, uh, so many species produce more offspring eggs. Many are many uh, are all capable of surviving to adulthood. For example, turtle, in each reproduction cycle, will produce about eight to twelve eggs, but only one to two survive into adulthood. This is natural selection. Which of the most of these eggs are most able to have the best genes for that environment to survive? So one, if one of them happens to be uh, too slow or colored in a way that pr makes it an easy prey or methadone too big or too small, uh, all these small differences in genes, if they are, are out, outside a certain, uh, uh, let's say, certain limits, then these uh, babies will not be able to survive. Now, either on that, you have a number. Now, even in a case where even a, a good, uh, even a, a turtle that is within the limits, it's still, it's still, it may, it's still may be a prey. It's still uh, a very uh, adapted uh, uh, hunter may be able to, to hunt it, or it may uh, lose its way, or uh, a rock may fall on it and break. So, even because that's where one to two survive, you still have this half 50% chance where even if one of them has to, but there's another that may even survive into adulthood with these uh, 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 odds that are outside the limits. So competition for the resources, offspring among each other. Then you have the predators, the hunters, and changing environment factors eliminate most of these individuals, and only the strongest will survive. Now those uh, with the favorable combination of genes survive and pass their genes to their generation. So this adult now that has survived, this is the adult that will lay eggs. So all the ones that laid outside the normal would have been eliminated. So obviously uh, their genes will not be a part of the pool anymore. Uh, now this mechanism over generation selects for the best combination of genetic variation to be carried over the generations. And again we mentioned um, that if there's the stressors were to change, uh, th these eggs are still within uh, limits that may choose which uh, uh, baby methadone here is the best for this certain uh, set of stressors. Gene flow is the movement of alleles from one population to another. So these are the agents of evolutionary change. So uh, migration of individuals or their gametes that they carry between genetically distinct populations, between population A and B, this is called uh, genetic or gene flow. So migration from can be a very powerful agent for uh, evolutionary change, methane pink to red and white to pink, methane bit, bit roses that we mentioned. A migration tends to homogenize the alleles frequency between population and all of them will end up being pink. So let's say you have uh, a mountain and on this side all of them are red, all these roses are red, and on this side this is another population, all of them are white. So gene flow is if one of these white ones, or one of the other one, one of these red ones, have somehow migrated with a bird, with a flow of river or something, and have been able to migrate to the, to the next population. This is called gene flow. Now, as it stays there, when it mates with the first rose, methana, it will, uh, it will have a population that is red, that is now R, W, so it's now pink. So over time, this will homogenize this entire population, and all of them will become pink, because now the red uh, gene is now there, and it is a dominant gene, so it would always show. So over time, it will become, you have a lot of this population will become pink. This is what we just mentioned. This is the mountain, and then the population red, and here is just red and blue. So, um, gene flow can occur either with migration or with intermarriage, interbreeding. So, uh, one of the ways, one of the ways it has been been mentioned, um, the humanity method, in you no know, people who marry from distances. Their children are usually more fit, stronger. مثلاً بحكي لك مثلاً يعني مثلاً very different countries or very different population, very different uh, 
uh, races usually provide uh, children that are um, have a better or a genetic outcome usually as because why because usually each species will have each subpopulation will have what is called gene drift gene drift if there is a one population that keeps breeding within itself over time you will have some diseases that accumulate there or some certain traits that accumulate there مثلا um خلينا نحكي مثلا sickle cell anemia uh, or thalassemia or um osteogenesis imperfecta or duchenne or whatever genetic disease that you want that is more common in certain population so مثلا um beta thalassemia مثلا in certain population alpha thalassemia and, and, and other uh, Asian populations, Africans with their sickle cell anemia, uh, Europeans with methylene hemophilia or uh, Ashkenazi Jews or, or all these things. So people who intermarry are less like these uh, flaw, flaws will not show and this is a way for these folks. So gene flow uh, is, is the treatment for gene drift. So uh, هذا بجوز تعرفوا الحديث غرب النكاح يعني انه ابعد قدر الامكان خلال الزواج عن الاقارب as to improve uh, this is the gene flow because as to improve the, 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 your gene flow and reduce gene drift so this reduces differences between population and spreading gene material and improving the gene pool فالجين درفت as we mentioned is the uh, Gene flow was the, 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 the flow or passage of traces of genes. Gene drift is random variations occurring because the genetic population is small, leading to the proliferation of specific traits within a population. Uh, is it the same as inbreeding, مثلاً? It's not a simple answer, but it is يعني, يعني the most simple way to, to describe it is inbreeding. أو زواج الأقارب, مثلاً. And this is one way of uh, gene drift. So to prevent gene drift, a genetic material must be shared, so gene flow is the mechanism to correct gene drift. Uh, gene drift and selection, uh, the two forces that determine the fate of alleles in a population is selection and drift. So selection is a change in allele frequencies due to function. Um, drift is the change in allele frequencies due to sampling, so a stochastic process. Uh, random distribution might be uh, predicted statistically new, uh, neutral variation is subject to a drift so you have this population that is has a great, great deal of variability then you have uh, purple uh, white uh, blue مثلاً, these blues are different shades of blue these purples are different shades of purple and these whites are different shades of white even variation here so what happens if two of these people have مثلا أخذوا بعض وراحوا عاشوا بالصحراء بعدوا عن كل ضلوا مع بعض what would happen so over time obviously this is the only gene pool from from now on so all over time they will breed obviously their children have to be in breeding inbred and then over time over time this entire population في هاي طبعا افتحوا افتحوا على جوجل وشوفوا القصص السيئة كان في كتير من هالأشياء بأستراليا بعض المناطق في أمريكا هدول القصص بذكرهم آخر إشي مش مش كمان في كمان مناطق تانية طبعا أشكنازي جوز كمان لأنهم قعدوا مثلا مئات السنين ما حد بيتجوز منهم وضلوا يتجوزوا من بعض كمان so uh, over time this is the entire gene pool here so this is not a very diverse gene pool so um, over time, what happens if this is this is a person with a, a, a recessive methyl disease? So over time, what is the chance of two purples marrying is higher. So obviously, if this person was not affected, was only a carrier, the recessive trait is very very high. So if you have chosen chosen um, these four as your population, جوزوا. so now is a lot of So now you have four people here that are carriers. So if they marry over time, 
so you will have full full disease this is what we mentioned remember if we, when we talked about uh, the inbreeding of the uh, of all the uh, royal families in Europe and hemophilia so they kept inbreeding uh, this emperor is the uncle of this empress which is which she is also the mother of that uh, Dutch uh, or Duke who is also the father of the same emperor over 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 so they had hemophilia a lot of them had hemophilia so they kept uh, breeding and then over time this where this population had only one carrier had this, this population has one two three four five six seven eight nine diseased person and instead of one carrier now they have multiple multiple carriers so if this population were was to never break off it would never end up like this because these will marry with each other so uh, historical events uh, historical or Mithran, uh, Mithran, uh, religious things or umur um, umur umur cultural umur whatever can affect uh, maybe droughts maybe uh, things that are beyond humans control anything any uh, stressor maybe or or any condition might cause population to break apart and then might cause this so as we as we mentioned this will be forever part of the history of the human race so do we are we are we to blame for these that occur because if we never broke up from each other and if we always stayed together maybe this would that would never have occurred or if it would occur it would be very very minimal so this is something to ponder uh, examples of adaptation uh, so the core of evolution is the way of a specific species to adapt to its environment so physiological traits and methane heat conservation uh, so this is the adaptation rather than natural selection so adaptation is the functional uh, ability to uh, to uh, functional uh, limits that you can go through within the same gene so methane if you are a heat if you want to conserve heat so methane you will reduce sweat production you will shiver the, the will cause muscles to contract less radiation less circulation methane this is adaptation so if your adaptation your adaptation is always within limits if the environment was to break your limits, خلاص, this person will, 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 will be overcome. But long-term adaptation will cause methane reduced surface area. Allen's rule is animals in warmer climate have longer extremities because they want to lose more heat. Bergman's rule is animals in cold climates have larger body size because they want to keep more heat. So does adaptation influence evolution? Yes, maybe. And from these rules, probably true. And is that uh, part of sele natural selection? So if uh, a zebra, um, uh, um, um, see this, uh, a giraffe with a very, very long neck, if it happens to live in the, if you happen to send it, the North Pole or the South Pole, probably not, not never survive. Uh, how would you ever have a giraffe that survive there? Obviously, probably, yani, uh, yani this this extreme uh, method of sending someone from some some species into a different environment will never will never occur. But if the environment itself were to change over time in a gradual manner, then adaptation will drive um, uh, microevolution, and then species will adapt to the new environment. So, geographical variation, high elevation. As we mentioned, the higher you are in the mountain, the smaller the stalk. As the longer the stalk, the because it wants to reach the rays, methane, or whatever. So, uh, four main mechanisms that drive genetic evolution: mutation, gene flow, gene drift, hakina, natural selection, stabilization, directional diversifying, and sexual selection. Uh, for sexual selection, let's talk about it. Why do certain people, for if you ask, for uh, your brother, your sister, um, which kind of person, which kind of maid do you prefer? Well, I, I prefer someone who is tall. I prefer someone who is uh, hefty. I prefer someone with 
whatever eyes, whatever hair, whatever something, things like that. So do your own um, criteria of selecting a mate based solely not on uh, cultural or um, method and mental factors, or which which can also be a part of the selection, but purely on on a physical appearance or method and ability to process information or method and how they can how do they speak how do they talk how do they analyze how do they present themselves all these are um, phenotypes of that person. For your selection, your own selection. If you look at a certain phenotype, say, this phenotype I am attracted to. Could that be part of your selection into selecting the best uh, mate for yourself that would ultimately produce the best uh, offspring? So that is yet another uh, thing that people uh, talk about and theorize over. Uh, agents of evolution of change, mutation, changes in the cell DNA. So is ultimate source of genetic variation. And we mentioned the um, uh, the pyramid and all the defense mechanisms and how some of them are become polymorphisms and very few are uh, pathological. So mutation rates are generally so low that they have little effect on the Hardy-Weinberg proportions of common alleles. But Hardy-Weinberg is the null model for genetic variation. La tullah bitib Hardy-Weinberg hadi drusuha akthar drusuha akthar ilha ilha formulas that uh, they get asked over but the Hardy Weinberg equation is the null model for genetic variation if you put uh, mathal, a human or an organism whatever in uh, in an environment that has absolutely entirely no stress null null model there will be no genetic variation so this is a very important thing and this proves everything that we have mentioned so far. So when the stressors are not changing, the allele differences and the genotype remains constant. This is different from the Hardy-Weinberg equation, which is something maybe you want to look at. We'll talk about it a little bit later when we talk about the autosomal dominant recessive modes. So mutations are going to go to the next question. To look at them, permanent change, mutation rates vary. Some loci are more likely to mutate than others. مثلا antibodies ذكر وحكينا antibodies how their areas is made to be to have a lot of more mutations because I want I want to drive variation in that area. Some other locations مثلا مثلا خلينا نحكي مثلا the proteins for the cell cell membrane or certain enzymes that can't live without or مثلا proteins that I put for respiration or whatever these are housekeeping genes I cannot change them. If they have the tiniest change, this will drive death. So this area of the genome would be highly protected from change. Other areas, some uh, uh, over time, genes will drift to that area that uh, become area that is less protected because I I like that area to have more variation. Method antibodies. Uh, mutations in somatic cells are not heritable but may be transmitted to uh, daughter cells. ارجع على المحاضرة هلا بحط لكم إياها describe this again normal missense إنه مثلا TTA مثلا TCA this is missense mutation which مثلا حكينا مثلا عن ال nonsense that causes a stop codon frame shift مثلا بدخل new nucleotide and then instead of reading TTA now it is TTT T and then the A here becomes part of the C G so A C C with deletion is this another variation uh, one base insertion one base deletion mutation to stop codon كل هذا هلا بالمحاضرة موجودة إذا بدكم ترجعوا لها forms of genetic variation single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNP if one nucleotide with another micro satellites or mini satellites these tandem repeats over present high levels هذا كتير مهمين بال colon cancer في هاي المناطق are very important for colon cancer. so these tandem repeats over often present high levels of inter and intra specific polymorphism areas. هدول الساتلايز are non-coding areas ما فيهم جينات بس فيهم areas that control 
transcription and translation of uh, from transcription and uh, um, transcription mainly of genes and how and, and their uh, epigenetics as well. Deletions or assertions, loss or addition of these hormone nucleotides. Uh, so microsatellites, di, tri or tetranucleotides repeated over 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 time. Uh, and these are the areas are called microsatellites. The second, abundant genetic variation in the human genome and usually have no functional effect, but some of them do. And kind of their functional effect is basically to drive the translation of the transcription and the level of transcription of other genes. Mini satellite is about six to sixty-four base pair repeating pattern. Also, yeah, it's similar to microsatellite, but these occur at more than one thousand locations in the human genome. Usually, they do not know the functional effects, but now we know that they can drive uh, protection of genes and then um, uh, protection of, of, of gene mutations and and uh, their ability to uh, yeah, basically maintain gene structures because their loss causes mutations in certain genes. Uh, polymorphism, some loci uh, vary considerably among individuals if a locus has two or more alleles whose frequency which exceeds about 1% in a population. So variable regions. This is polymorphism that we mentioned. This is a single nucleotide polymorphism over and over in either different areas that gives a person uh, their own uh, uniqueness. The classification of these SNPs, coding SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms that happen in a... Uh, so this is a single base substitute that do not cause a change in the resulting amino acid. So these are called synonymous. Non-synonymous, when a single base Substitution causes change in the resulting amino acid. It does change the amino acid. Non-coding SNPs that influence a gene expression and promote an influence that do not happen within the same within the gene, but the areas that influence the gene, methane promoter region or methane uh, satellite region. These are called non-coding SNPs. Now, non-coding silent. There is also non-coding silent SNPs. How many variations are present in the average human genomes? As we mentioned. Uh, these SNPs appear at least once per 0.3 to 1 kb average intervals. Considering the size of the entire human genomes, Hakina, about 3.2 billion, Rahkun to the number is about 5 to 10 million, or about 5 million, yani, the conservative number. Potentially, again, there are about 100,000 uh, microsatellites polymorphic all over the human genome. Uh, these insertion deletions uh, are very difficult to quantify. And the number is likely to fall between SNPs and uh, microsatellites as well. So mutation and polymorphism, this is uh, important. That a mutation is rare, polymorphism is common. This has a Mendelian pattern of inheritance. This has no clear pattern of inheritance. Mutation has a gene directly leads to disorder. This gene confers an increased risk but does not directly cause disorder, maybe even have a protective effect. So the take home message is the variation is good for uh, survival. Uh, I will also upload the relevant uh, lectures uh, links at home on Teams. We